Hi, I'm Juan, and in this class we'll learn the fundamental part of character design, structures and proportions. We will begin by opening Photoshop and creating a new file. It can be any size, but I will use Full HD, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels, with 72 pixels per inch as resolution. We click then on Create and we have a blank canvas ready to be used. Ok, so now we zoom up a little bit, remember the first thing you do is to save your work. It's even more important if you have a dysfunctional PC that crashes all the time. So we are going to name this file class slash 101 slash cd on caps on the version number in this case 00. You can start with 01 if you want. We save my dear sweet potatoes. The next thing to do is to choose a brush which is comfortable for you. Try a soft and fluid brush that does not have a lot of texture and can follow on real time the flow of your hand gesture. It's one of the most important things. I use the Kyle's brush set. I use mostly his manga set who works wonderful and lets you draw your hand gesture with ease. Even if the brush does not make the artist, you have to be comfortable with it. Try drawing lines with your brush and test different types of brush strokes on the canvas. Large ones and small ones. I prefer the thinner brushes who gives a pen feel while drawing. It's really easy to draw with it. We create a group of layers and we will name it CD slash rough all in caps lock because that's what we will do now. All right, and now we create a layer within the group we just made and we name it rough slash zero one. It's okay to make mistakes. That's why we put numbers after its name. And now we are ready to draw. The first thing to do is write the, her characteristics. Is what we noted during chapter one. We said she was a woman who liked hiking. Of around 17 years, I think. Since she does a lot of hiking, she needs good shoes for that. Good boots, which are based in good reference, who can be found in the pure ref board we made during chapter 1. Okay, the right click on my Wacom pen is a useful shortcut for changing to brush size, which is Alt right click or Option right click on Mac. You can always change the size of your brush whenever you want without needing to go through the brush menu which hinders the workflow a lot. Our character main trait is gloomy. Remember her French. I, I would love her to have black hair and be really pale. Remember that all the info we need to create our character is on pure ref. You can use a second screen or a PNG and paste it on your Photoshop file. It's up to you to figure out which option do you like the most. I work with my other PC on my side, personally. I prefer it that way. Let's rename the layer as Notes. Now we create another layer and we name it like the previous layer. That means rough slash zero one. We put the notes aside with V and drag them to the left. I prefer start drawing tiny sketches. I love tiny stuff. Drawing small helps you see the overall pose on figure and it doesn't let you focus on details. In this part of the chapter, the details is the last thing we need. Try doing a pose which is lively, but avoid doing stiff poses. I get angry if you do. I'm kidding. <laughs> but try giving life to your character by breaking the symmetry. One way to do this is by twisting the hips and putting the weight only on one leg. This is what I call a lopsided posture. It gives a lot of life. Always remember to draw small. We will go further on details later on. We can draw several small poses in order to have a bigger range of choice. We will pick the first pose just because I like this lopsided version. Then we pick the lasso tool, draw a circle to select the pose and Ctrl G or Command G to duplicate the layer with the selection we made. We can name the new layer rough 
slash 01 if we want. We can also delete the small poses layer or keep them if we want. Once we deleted the small poses layer, we can resize the pose we select by transforming it using Ctrl T or Command T on dragging one corner of the selection. This is pretty basic. Now the line strokes we use must be fluid like the water. My advice is not to draw every cylinder of the legs, but rather draw the whole body without taking the pen off the screen. And, and now we're going to push this rough a little bit, drawing the median lines on the face on the body. We create another layer named rough slash 02 and lower the opacity to about 25 to 30%. We start by the neck and drawing a more precise rough. Never forget about drawing the median line, the line that goes through the middle of the body on the face. It helps a lot when drawing with proportions. You can use this median line to reinforce the lopsided pose. Then we draw different parts of the body with simple geometric shapes. The torso and pelvis are two different parts, always. Okay. Actually, we will change the color to accentuate the median line. We click on the little square up here to lock the layer. So, a small lock will appear at the right of the current layer. Okay, this is good. Now, we use the shape rectangle tool and pick a blue color. Try not to saturate it too much. Now, let's do the legs. The legs are based on two big cylinders. The cylinders go wider at the base of the legs because of a set of muscles which closes the legs. That means the cylinders are not perfectly straight. You should always try drawing with curves since the straight lines are not really natural. The calves can be also drawn as a cylinder, which has more mass on the outer part of the leg rather than the inner part. This part of the body looks like a chicken drumstick. You cannot unsee it. There is also the serratus muscle, which goes from the inner part of the knee and is attached to the outer part of the pelvis bone. This particular shape looks like a bow. Also, there is an important rule to remember. There is the head size rule. With this rule, you can guess how big a character is by measuring how many heads fits on the body. The more heads the character's body has in it, the bigger it is. The less heads, the smaller. It's quite simple. I think the character we are drawing now measures around 165 centimeters to 170 centimeters tall. You can also use this measurement tool to check your proportions. Okay, now let's talk about one of the most important elements putting the character on the ground. First, we draw two cylinders for the heels at the end of the chicken drumstick. If you have to, draw a square to imagine the perspective on the ground. It's a good drawing habit to have. When you draw, you should always imagine drawing in 3D, but that depends on the style. Anyway, your volumes are meant to have depth in space. To draw the structure of the feet, you can draw triangular shapes on a circular shape for the tip of the feet. Also, if you add a 3D grid, the lower character should help a lot. Please, I beg you, avoid drawing flat characters. If you want to draw flat characters, do it on purpose. If you check model sheets on the internet, you will see that character feet are positioned always to give the illusion of depth. Look how sad he looks. When you draw too much on 2D, it can harm the depth of 3D. The arms can be simplified as cylinders, much like we did for the legs. Always remember the line work, remember the curves, remember the burst strokes. The scapula is an essential part of it. It has a triangular shape. Don't forget to draw it when you draw the back. The elbow on the shoulder have more heart shaped angles. Let's do another cylinder for the forearm. Now we can do the hand. The hands are quite simple to do in proportion. They are like uh, small cubes. 
you can try doing the fingers by groups during this stage. The thumb, the index on the rest of the fingers. The thumb has a ball shape at its base. So draw the hand as a rectangle on the fingers as long rectangles too. Group them if you can. Here we can see the main muscle that spins the forearm of the elbow. It's named the brachioradialis. It's a hard name, yeah. It gives more mass to the thumb part of the forearm. So this muscle goes always with the thumb. So when the hand is in pronation, which means in the rotation, you can see the S shapes this muscle makes. Remember, always this position is pronation. The main purpose of the brachioradialis is to rotate the arm. I personally suggest you to learn this muscle, since it's the most important to figure out when you draw. I love drawing these muscles a lot. Now let's do the right hand. Draw triangles or rectangles for the fingers. I use rectangular shapes when I'm drawing a more bulky character, and triangular shapes when the character is slimmer, like the Clumy Girl. It's okay if the drawing is not 100% perfect. We are making the rough and can come back to it on later stages, always. So don't put pressure on yourself, it's okay. The most important thing in this phase is that the pose works on its own. Since she's a woman, we have to draw her breast. We will also add the clavicles. If we look, if we look from above, the clavicles look like a clothes hanger. We see mostly the frontal part. Great, we drew most of the proportions. Here we can see the thoracic cage on the pelvis. Ok, now the first phase is done. We can go further into detail now. Now I'm going to teach you some proportion tips about the face. Since we are drawing a gloomy character, her eyes will be more closed than other kind of eyes. Just draw some few sketches by the side if you want. To draw these kinds of eyes, you can do only four hand gestures, it's really easy. The upper lid is one straight line, like this, on the lower one, two lines more curvy and angular. Finally, half of the iris is a semicircle, really easy. Now we place a lacrimal gland within the center of the horizontal median line. It's really hard to say, but it's really easy when you see it on the screen. The eyebrows goes a little bit up. We can give the nose a diamond shape to make it stand out on the mouth, just another straight line. A circle for the head and a triangle for the jaw. We draw the median lines horizontal and vertically. The base of the hairline is one third from the upper median line. From the hairline we divide the vertical median line in three. One third for each. The lacrimal gland goes within the line of the median horizontal line. The first part of the one third median vertical divisions ends on the eyebrows. The second part for the nose. And finally, the third part for the mouth on the jaw. We can try and do the same on our model. Find the hairline by dividing the upper part of the head by three. Then from the hairline, we divide the face in four parts. The first part, the forehead. The second part, the nose, eyes and ears. And the last part, the mouth and the jaw. The lips can be drawn in different ways. You can suggest their form by drawing only a single line, but always remembering to draw in arcs. Drawing in arcs and in curves. Curves and arcs, remember. Or fill the volume with color. In this case, the same of the line. I prefer letting the lips as a line. We can finish the model as it is and perfect it during the title. Okay, so now the model is done, so we can finish the model as it is and perfect it like polishing it during the tie down. It does not matter in which pose you draw your character, just try to draw it with the 3D grid and in perspective if possible, always keeping good proportions, of course. A 3D grid is even essential and helps you understand perspective too. We'll talk about perspective during the second chapter. It looks hard, but it's really easy. The median line that divides the body on two parts is equally important. 
a lot of people forget to put it, but it's really, really important. Even the masters put it. It helps you handle the symmetry problems mostly when the character is on a three quarters pose. The horizontal median line goes between the eyes, always. Here I draw an example of the basic proportions tips that can help you when drawing characters from your imagination. So, there are many ways to do proportions on different morphologies you can use depending on the character. Here I am drawing a more muscular character. You can play with proportions in order to do different types of characters. You can also choose to give more muscle or fat to a part of the body. In this example, this character has a broad torso. His pelvis looks narrower because of his big torso. We can figure out what kind of job or lifestyle this character has just by looking at his silhouette. Always when you draw in a more cartoony style, you must exaggerate proportions. It can be so fun to do character design. I know that some people in the industry start drawing an army of tiny silhouettes first and then they pick one. It's a super effective technique. This stage is all about geometric shapes. Simply find your character. I prefer to draw in a more realistic style. It's true that the difference and exaggerations are a bit more subtle than a cartoony style, but it's a choice. You remember using the head or other parts of the body to check proportions. If you draw a vertical line from the top of the head to the base of the heels in an average body and you divide this line by two, the middle point is at the end of the torso, on the beginning on the legs. So the upper part is for the torso on head and the lower part is for the legs. Actually, if you open your arms, the size from the left tip of the hand to the right tip of the other hand is the same size as your height. The wrist is placed where the pelvis ends. The elbow is placed almost at the same place than the belly button. When the arm is in supination, it has always a curve and is never straight. Never. One tool you cannot neglect is anatomy. It helps a lot. I wrote a list of books I recommend the most. So. Today we'll learn about the fundamentals of proportions. In next class we'll push the rough further. Have a great day!